first Purge has just been released in cinemas. It's actually the fourth film in the franchise, a franchise that I have actually not seen any of up until now. This is my introduction to the franchise, uh, and if it hadn't been a prequel, I probably wouldn't have bothered, to be honest, but as it's set before the first three, I thought, let's give it a go. So the first three films were written and directed by James DeMonaco. He writes this one, but he's passed the directing torch over to Gerard McMurray. Even though I've never seen any of the previous films, I've always been intrigued by them, the idea of them. Uh, I'm not quite sure it would work in reality, obviously, you know, for obvious reasons. Uh, but I've always found that the idea has some intriguing elements to it, shall we say, that, that could really spark off some political debate some thinking about how humanity operates and that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, I came into this one with an open mind. And with Marissa Tomei as well, obviously, in the credits, I thought, yeah, she's pretty respectable, tends to do pretty respectable things. This film's a turd. Uh, I did not like this one bit, to be honest. Uh, it, yeah, it squanders its concept big time and any kind of political leanings that it has uh, are either completely obviously flaunted in our faces you know a few digs at trump trump's america that kind of thing but they're so on the nose it just quite frankly feels a little bit childish um or they are simply just kind of dispensed with halfway through for the sake of delivering us a all-out action film instead. It also becomes a film that is too concerned with raising racial tensions, racial issues, uh, you know, black America being subjugated by white America, only it doesn't really have anywhere to go with it or anything more to say with it than that. Like literally in this film, every white dude, every white chick is a bad guy, is an evil kind of part of this corporate America that is feeding off you know, the, the working man who is embodied by the, you know, the, the street thugs and the black gangsters that are picking up guns and railing against, fighting against the evil white America. I've got nothing against raising these kind of, you know, racial awareness issues. I think many films do a tremendous job of doing that. This ain't one of them. Uh, if you're trying to get me to sympathize with a bunch of characters who are oppressed, who are downtrodden, who are racially abused, don't do it through a lead character who is a gangster who blows people away faster than he spends his pocket change and quite frankly deserves to be locked away in prison. Halfway through the film we get glimpses of some kind of redemptive streak. I think we're meant to look at it that way anyway. That The fact that he goes to try and save this this woman and this 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 lad uh yeah it doesn't really do anything to win me over to his side to see any kind of redemptive streak and the fact that they suddenly turn him into some kind of marvel superhero who is quite frankly unstoppable and breaks people's necks like they're nothing it's just yeah it, it literally goes into superhero movie territory and it doesn't belong there this guy isn't a superhero, he isn't very good at representing most of the black community in America, at least I certainly hope not, uh, and yeah, he's certainly not a hero that I want to follow when you're dealing with racial issues. Not when you can go back through the history books and look at people like Martin Luther King who, you know, did what they did with a sense of nobility, with a sense of passion, and with a sense of humanity and goodness in their soul you know so yeah not buying this character don't want to go along with his journey and i certainly don't want to support whatever message it is they're trying to get at the end of this film by having this guy take the lead there is a glimmer of hope in this film this character of naya played by lex scott alexander but that glimmer of hope quite frankly is dispensed with by the fact that she kind of comes around, shall we say. So she's railroading this guy at the start of the film, talking about, you know, his life that he's in, that, that, that he's kind of turned his back, as I say, on being good, and instead fallen into a life of crime, become a gangster. And I'm on her side. I'm with her. She's my hero in this, quite frankly. I want to go along with her. So when he goes in all guns blazing at one point, 
to to save her thereby kind of becoming the hero she kind of gives him a hug and he's all like you know yay what a guy and i yeah i'm not buying it i don't want to buy that i wanted to buy the philosophy on life you had at the start of the film not this kind of flip this change that you've suddenly had that doesn't deal with any of the issues that have been raised doesn't kind of make any kind of clear statement about uh being against violence being against the use of violence but actually says you know what when i'm in a tight spot I actually rather support violence. So it's a film with tons of mixed messages, no particularly great political statements to make. You know, this isn't Get Out, and I know a lot of people who know my channel will, will think that I hate Get Out. When I don't, I've said this many times before, I think Get Out is a brilliant film. It didn't, it didn't deserve all those Oscar nom nominations, but it is a brilliant film. And what it does, it does well. You know, it has something very political to say, and it does it in a very intelligent way. This doesn't, you know, and this is from the same studio that brought us Get Out. So you would expect that kind of intellect involved, that kind of intelligent thinking, discussion, on the you know the the racial tensions in society society we don't get that we don't get it at all what we get is crazy ass stereotypes of lower working class black people that are then kind of amped up and twisted and turned into some kind of false heroicism throw into the mix characters such as skeletor yeah there's this character in here called Skeletor. Um, he's such an insane ball of rage and hatred and tension that just kind of pours out on this purge. Um, I don't believe for a second that this guy would not have been incarcerated before this point. You know, I, I don't believe for a second that he would have been able to hold all that inside enough to never get imprisoned only to let it out now on this this you know this first purge it's ridiculous and the way that this guy plays it the way that the, the actor plays this character the way it's directed i'm sure they think they're making the dark knight i'm sure they think that this is the next joker kind of style villain this isn't the dark knight he isn't the joker and this film is dog crap. Marissa Tomei's character as well is just one big contradiction. So she's the character, and I'm not giving any, anything away in this, this is all in the trailer. Literally, if you've seen the trailer for this film, you've seen the film. Uh, so many of the things that they should have kept secret should have been left for the film, uh, and I went in practically knowing everything. So we have this character played by Marissa Tomei, she's the one who basically came up with the idea of The Purge for psychological reasons, you know, she wanted to see what the the psychological ramifications of doing this would be and the government took that and decided I know let's let's use it as, as a way of essentially getting rid of the lower classes of America so we don't have to deal with their health care and, and, and other kind of things like that she just doesn't about turn once she finds out that they're sending military people in that they're they're fixing the game so to speak she suddenly gets a moral conscience really not mm, no mm, no it's just the most feeble pathetic attempt to put some kind of moral flavor in there she's about as moral as any white character gets to be honest which is really troubling if that's the state of america um based on a lot of what i see on the news i could believe it but yeah uh no not buying it pathetic writing just like most of what is in this film i give the first purge two out of five and the only reason it gets two and not one is because once the action starts flying i am moderately entertained it's just that when you look underneath and see what what it kind of leads to what it's all about it's very thin there's nothing there really so this isn't very encouraging for me to go back and watch the first three though i am reliably told that they are better we'll see see if i get there uh but yeah that's my review of The First Purge. What about you? Have you seen it? And if so, what did you think about it? And where would you rank it in relation to the other three films? Comment below, let me know, and until next time, crack it.